Here's a new item called the Ultra Mini Driver Display, and I would like to thank Handshow for sending me this unit to look at. Let me unbox it and show you what I got. The outside of the box is wrapped in tape. The label says Smart LCD Dashboard, compatible with the Intel Atom Model 3 and Y. OS Linux, 4.6 inch screen size and a resolution of 960 by 320. Let me use my utility knife and open it up. Lifting up the front lid, we have a protective foam pad on top. There is an installation manual on several sheets of paper. It has a detailed description of the components and a step-by-step -step photo list for the installation process. Underneath that is a cable harness. This one happens to be for the AMD processor that is included on newer Tesla Model 3 and Y cars. Inside this bag is the display itself. It's called the Ultra Mini Driver Display and the shape of it conforms to the top of the steering wheel column. When installed, it looks like it came from the factory that way. On the side of the screen is a USB port that will be for installing software updates. Here's a look underneath at the label. The wrapped wiring on the bottom will connect to the wiring harness and eventually to the car's CPU. Here's a good overhead view of the cover. The front of the car is towards the top and the steering wheel is towards the bottom. The side round cutouts are for the steering wheel stocks on both sides of the column. This is a snap-in replacement for the original part on the car. Under that is another wiring harness. This one is for the Intel Atom CPU, which happens to be the one for my car. And that's all that's in the box. Here's a closer look at the Intel wiring harness. This plug connects to the wire that is on the underside of the display I showed earlier. And this is an accessory wire that is not currently used. The wires are wrapped in a fabric tape to keep them together and protected. It is several feet long, plenty to reach the car's CPU location. At the end is a Y adapter with two connectors. One male that goes to the car's CPU, and the other female where the car's CPU cable will attach to. The male end has a tab that you press on it to remove it from the female connector. Next, we have the AMD cable harness. Like the Intel cable, one end has the connector for the display along with an accessory plug. Then we have the long length of wrapped wires. The blue connector goes to the AMD CAN bus on the right door, A pillar in the footwell. Then there is an AMD power plug Y adapter. And finally, it also has an Intel CAN bus Y adapter that's included. Since my installation is for Intel, I will place this harness back in the box since it is not needed. These two parts are all I need. So on to the installation. The first thing I need to do is get good access to the top of the steering column area. Go into the menu and select steering wheel adjustment and then scroll the left button down to lower the wheel as low as possible. Then press the left button roller to the left to adjust outwards as far as possible. I need to remove the top half of the steering column trim. You can see that there's a line that marks the seam between the top and bottom sections. I found that the seam was fairly tight and that the best area to start the process is where the steering wheel meets the top cover. Use a plastic pry bar to wedge in between and slowly pull the cover so that it separates. There are four clips that hold it in place.
Once it is loose, pull it up and outward. Towards the back, there are four tabs that are inserted from the fabric cover. Pull the trim piece towards you to release it from those tabs. Now that it is disconnected, you can place it aside. I put it back into the box so that if I ever need to replace the cover, I can put it back again. Now place the new screen in the same location. Snap in the four tabs from the fabric section into the new piece. Then lay it down on the steering column. According to the instructions, you would remove the trim panel below the steering wheel and route the wire through this area and then towards the center console behind the carpeted panel. Then inside the console, go all the way across it and then it will come out on the passenger side. Then you would run it along the center console to the front of the footwell, then along the front of it to the right side and then up towards the A-pillar. However, since my previous driver screen installation used the dashboard, I will remove the old wire and put the new wire in the same area, run it along the top to the right side of the dash, then down the side and into the right footwell area, and then up to the CPU. That's the method I will show today. I need to remove the dash panel. First, take off the two trim pieces on the left side of the dashboard. As usual, a plastic pry bar is very useful for this project. Then, do the same thing for the passenger side. In addition, I will be routing the cable down the right side here. I need to remove this trim piece between the dashboard and the door. It snaps out very easily. Pull up the entire dashboard by the front edge. There are a number of clips holding it into place. Then I need to angle it to remove it from this location. It can be a little tight due to the touchscreen being close to it. Just be careful when you remove it. Once it's loose, place it aside. Take the wire harness and stick the end with the two small block connectors through the right side of the fabric shroud. There is an opening where it will fit. Attach the end of the wire connector onto the new screen. Then move some of the extra wire length back down into the dash area. Snap the screen piece into place onto the steering column and it should take a bit of pressure. Uh, you may need to press down firmly to get it to snap into place and remember that there are four tabs that need to be connected. Previously I had used gaffer tape to hold down the wire harness in the dashboard area. I reused these pieces from the last wire installation. This isn't required, but I think it keeps the wire from blocking the trim clips and reduces movement due to airflow. Here you can see me laying down the wire and the tape covering it, and it's following openings and around obstacles for the best fit. And this is where the wire is routed all across the ender 
lying area under the dash. Now take the dashboard panel and angle it down towards the front of the car. Then slide it into place. If you feel any resistance, make sure that the wire is not blocking any of the clip openings. Then press down all the way across the dashboard. It will snap into place. There should be no gap between the panel and the trim underneath it. In the passenger seat area, look under the glove box. There is a panel with four trim clips holding it into place. Remove them with the plastic pry bar. Pull down the panel. Unhook the light connector on the right side. And then unhook the speaker connector on the left side. You can now take the panel and place it somewhere else. Next, I need to remove the door opening panel that goes along from the glove box all the way down to the seat area. On the top, there is a trim clip holding it in place that needs to be popped out. Now, the trim piece has a bunch of clips holding it in. I needed to take out the floor mat first since it got in the way. The trim piece can be pulled all the way out and place it aside. The wire that is poking out from the dashboard is right here. Push the wire so that it fits into the crevices of the plastic frame. And then route it down the right side where you see the other wires. Push the wire harness around the other connectors and towards the inside of the car. It will drop down here. With the wire down on the right side, we need to get it to where the arrow is pointing. That's where the CPU is located. This area is super tight to work in. I found that I had to wedge myself into the footwell headfirst and reached my hands into the area above. The connector I need to take out is the second one from the bottom. There is a little clip that I push in and then pull the connector out of the CPU. As I said, this is the hardest part of the installation since there's not a lot of room. At the end of the wire harness is a Y adapter with a male and female connectors. Take the male one and plug it into the opening into the CPU that we just made available. Make sure all connectors click into place and make a solid connection. Then take the original CPU cable and place it into the female end of the Y adapter. Okay, the toughest part is now done. At this point, I can put everything back into place, starting with the passenger side, put the trim pieces into their original positions. And with that, installation is now complete. The car is still off. By sitting in the driver's seat, it will turn on both the Tesla touchscreen and the new driver display. When the screen turns on, it has a little startup video. Here's the detail for that video. It's pretty nice. It runs for about seven seconds. Now I'll give some close-ups of the finished installation and show you just how compact the display is. As you can see, it is low profile and does not block the front vents in front of the driver. This is a view of the display through the windshield. It blends in with the look of the car and appears about as OEM as you could get. This is the second generation Handshow driver display, the 9 inch version that I installed back in April. That's a huge difference in size. Of course, this display does not have the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay compatibility, but it is significantly less cost. And that's it for the installation of the Ultra Mini Driver Display by Handshow. I modified the installation to go across the top of the dash, which I think is much easier a method for you to do.
If you are interested in this item, please see the link in the video description. Don't forget to use code RANGER to get 25% off during November for the Black Friday sale. The next video will cover the software and how to use it along with my conclusion. Click on the link right here for that video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.